The Rosary. Picture a long, beautiful, fragrant garland of roses. From the Latin word comes the word rosary, which means a garland of roses. The rose symbolizes the Virgin Mary, most notably due to its role in her many appearances, such as the out-of-season roses that spilled from Juan Diego's tilma, uncovering our Blessed Mother's miraculous image, to his previously unbelieving audience, the rosary is perhaps the most generally recognizable Catholic item. We're all familiar with the popular image of rosary beads moving through praying hands, a rosary draping from the side of Mother Teresa, nuns and religious, or dangling from a rearview mirror. After Vatican II, the rosary fell into relative disuse, and Marian devotion suffered as a whole. But in recent years, thanks to Mary's intercession, the rosary has made a comeback. And not just among Catholics, many Protestants now pray the rosary, recognizing that the prayers that comprise it come mainly from the Bible. The rosary is a Christian devotion in honor of the Virgin Mary, our Heavenly Mother, who said yes to God's will, in contrast to our earliest relative, Eve, the mother of fallen humanity, who said no. Non-Catholics sometimes take issue with the words, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, as if such a request was contrary to 1 Timothy 2.5, which reads, there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. The preceding verses, however, reveal that praying for one another does not detract from Christ, but is rather urged, as St. Paul tells us, quote, I urge that prayers, supplications, petitions, and thanksgivings be made for all people. This is good and pleases God our Savior. 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 3. We are told to pray for each other, and we know that this includes all people, even those who live before us, because God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as Jesus clarified. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Those who argue that Paul's appeal for intercessory prayer applies only to those on earth should review Revelation 5.8, which reads, quote, The twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp, and with golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, or the prayers of God's people, as the NIV prefers, if some 24 elders prostrate before Christ the Lamb are offering the prayers of the faithful, how much more so Jesus' own mom, after having suffered so intimately what her son endured for our sins, what elder could possibly offer better prayers on our behalf than Mary? The Lamb they fell down before is none other than God's own, Mary's own son. I could go on and on about tested and proven Marian apparitions and miracles. See my prophecy videos. A prime example is Fatima's Miracle of the Sun, which was witnessed by over 70,000 people, many of them atheists hostile to Christianity. This scientifically inexplicable phenomenon verified the reality of Mary's appearance on behalf of her son's being so greatly dishonored by Earth's inhabitants. Countless proofs of her intercessory power have been given the modern world, yet many choose a veiled reality over Mary's motherly request that we return to her beloved son. In the same way atheists refuse to consider the evidence stacked in favor of God's existence, other resistant souls refuse to acknowledge or honor the woman God himself created to be the mother of his son. The apparitions and or lacrimations, which are divine tears, associated with La Salette in France, Fatima in Portugal, Akita in Japan, Syracuse in Sicily, Cochabamba in Bolivia, and Savita Vecchia in Italy were all approved by the Church. In fact, 
Miraculous lacrimations have increased worldwide at an unprecedented rate. Why? Because countless offenses hurled against Christ and his church from without and within have piled up to heaven like dirty laundry and called down upon earth a good scrubbing, divine justice. We are now being urgently warned. In an image in Caracas, Venezuela, Mary and Jesus weep real tears and human blood. Nearby, another image sheds a mysterious oil. In Damascus, Syria, a lady develops stigmata, the miraculous wounds of Christ, that exude a fragrant supernatural oil. Through these divine liquids, many have been healed. In Houston, Texas, Jesus cries a mysterious fragrant oil. In fact, all holy images brought into that particular home cry divine liquids. Such occurrences have historically appeared as a sign, often around the time some great trauma or event befell that area. Today, divine warnings in all forms are happening everywhere. Let this be a sign to us that some profound event is near, even at our doorstep. A mere search on YouTube will testify to this, Just be wary of the increasing number of fake videos created with editing software for the purpose of gaining financial points from increased viewership. If anything in a video promotes homosexuality, immodesty, or seeks to drive you from orthodox Catholic teaching, worship, or tradition, don't trust it. It's infused with the spirit of Antichrist, whether the video creator's aware of it or not. So, Where did the rosary come from? Some say that St. Dominic, founder of the Order of Preachers, the Dominicans, instituted the rosary. But actually, certain parts of the rosary predate Dominic, and other parts were added after his death. Centuries before Dominic, monks had begun reciting all 150 psalms on a regular basis. Over time, it was felt that The lay brothers, known as the conversi, should have some form of prayer all their own. They were distinct from the choir monks, and one chief distinction was that they were illiterate. During prayerful meditation, since they couldn't read, they were unable to recite all 150 psalms with the monks. They needed prayer that could be easily memorized, but rather than choose one or two psalms, How would one pick only two? The prayer first chosen was the Our Father, and depending on the circumstances, it was said 50 or 100 times while meditating. These conversi would use rosaries to keep count, and the rosaries were then known as paternosters, Our Fathers, as Jesus had taught us to pray. By the 12th century, they were being used to count the first half of what we call now the Hail Mary, taken directly from Scripture. The second half of the Hail Mary was added later in response to heresies that denied Jesus was truly human, had a mother, or that Jesus was truly God. That is why it includes the words, Mother of God. Jesus has a human mother, and Jesus is also God. He is not merely a good person or a mighty prophet. To deny that Mary is mother of God, that is, the human mother of the second divine person of the one holy trinity, is to deny the trinity altogether. To do that is to reject Christianity. As Christians grew an understanding of the rosary, making more frequent use of it, both Catholics and non-Catholics alike came to see how its meditations enwrapped the soul with heavenly aroma of the Blessed Mother of Jesus, who is God, in honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What better way to honor God the Father than to honor God the Son? And what better way to honor God the Son than to honor His human mother? Like liturgical music playing in the background, the prayers of the rosary are recited as one meditates upon the mysteries of God's salvific plan. The rosary begins with the Apostles' Creed, the Credo, 
the Our Father, which is the Lord's Prayer or the Pater Noster, three Hail Marys, Aves, and the Glory Be, Gloria Patri. Per Mary's request, most add the Fatima prayer after each Glory Be. Heaven encourages us to sing a new song to the Lord. What better way to honor the Son than to pray along with His Mother through the gift of Her Holy Rosary? And in another video, I'll show you how to sing as you recite this beautiful devotion. God bless. Oh.